This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Servus, Grezi, and hello <laughs> is what the Germans folks say. Uh, servus, Leon, good to yeah, see you again. Servus, Hecky, <laughs> nice to be here once again. Oh, nice accent, eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome back to Mordecast number 35. We are recording this on July 7th, 2020. Two, two. two. Okay. <laughs> complicated. <laughs> so, uh, roughly a month after um, our last episode around Mordic Conference Global. Exactly. So, we will have to talk about that during this episode and see if we're still back to, or if we're already back to life. <laughs> uh, we have much more good stuff. We do have a fantastic interview with my friend Andreas Stuber. Um, who, we mentioned in the last episode regarding the universal chat plugin for Mordic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so today he's giving us insights into this whole concept of the universal chat product. Nice. And the uh, ties into Mordic and what we can learn from it. Yeah, excited to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, we get some housekeeping left to do because in the last episode... Um, our community spotlight was Miroslav Fedelis, and we stated that he's from Hungary, but actually he's from the Czech Republic. So there's a little mistake on our side, and we had to correct that. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, Prague seems to be <laughs> seems to be a real epicenter of Mordic these yeah. days. <laughs> really. Um, and uh, on top of that, we also have Drupal something. Draft days, I guess, days, coming up like in, in September. Yeah, and it looks like we will uh, take that opportunity and have some little Mordic event oh. around that as well. Nice. Again, that's September in Prague. So save the date if you're interested. Go there, and uh, we'll meet all the local Mordic folks for sure. All of them. <laughs> yeah, and um, talking about Mordic, the Mordic 4.4 version was briefly released and that introduced the PHP 8 support. So that was the reason why we didn't have a 4.3.1 and went directly into 4.4, if I remember correctly. That's right. It's a little bit out of cycle, but, but the PHP support is pretty much overdue. Yeah. It's not like any of us normal folks would <laughs> care, but the developers do care a lot. So there you go. Yeah, and also some, some bug fixes were introduced in E4.4. Um, speaking of the custom objects plugin, which had some issues running beforehand, but now with the 4.4, it seems to be fixed. But yeah, 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 I'd like to hook into okay, that yeah, sure, because sure. It, it hit me as well. <laughs> uh, we did uh, celebrate the custom objects plugin last time because 4.3 laid the groundwork for that. And, yeah. Uh, we started playing around with it and, and using it and, and loving it. <laughs> and um, uh, the next best, best opportunity, well, it was really not the first, not the second, not the third, but at some point, it just wouldn't let me install the plugin. And oh, uh, yeah. on that instance, I dug around a little bit and noticed, okay, here's a bug. Wow, well, GitHub issue. Oh, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Merged into 4.4. Move to 4.4 directly. Yeah. So that fixed the problem. Uh, custom objects pl plugin is still great. We still celebrate it. But here you go. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, some new bugs snuck themselves into the 4.4 release because currently there seems to be an issue with creating custom fields of the type date. If you create them, Mordic just won't let you create them. And there's been some issues. So it's already in GitHub. And you got something more to say to that? Yeah, because it <laughs> was directly the next thing that happened to me as well, like for any other, uh, many others as well. Yeah. Yeah, it just wouldn't let you create a fresh <laughs> custom field. That's a big and, issue. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, there's an easy workaround. So um, it's, pro it's surely going to be fixed in 4.4.1. But if you need a custom field of type date, meanwhile, do a look at the show notes. Uh, there's a link to the workaround. Perfect. B basically, the workaround is cloning an existing oh, field. Uh, hacker man yeah. stuff. I it's, see. I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, your style, eh? Um, so, we, we have a little bit of knowledge today. Uh, some is around email, like always, or a lot is around email. <laughs> um, um, email has many flavor or many facets, of course. One mm -hmm. is the, the challenge to get the email in, into the face of your 
recipient to make sure it's going to, you're not going to spam, it's not going to be filtered away, whatever, or and it's not going to be ignored because of a silly headline or whatever. Yeah. Um, so inboxing is is one of the terms being used there, and it's it's always an issue. And at every single Morty conference, you have multiple talks <laughs> about how to achieve the best inboxing. True, yeah. And um, yeah, it's worth looking at all those talks. But there's a new thread in the forums where there's a direct issue or somebody has an, an actual problem and then within this thread they do a in-depth analysis of, of oh, okay nice. what's what's the symptoms what's your observations what's your parameters yeah. and so so if you just want to follow that analysis and learn from that go to that forum thread that, that we're linking to and as part of that or a little spin-off of that there's a tip by our friend robin in south africa um who recommended gmas.co slash inbox for, <laughs> for email deliverability testing. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of other tools out there, free and freemium and paid and whatever. Sure. Um, but honestly, I don't know which is the best. And, and here in the agency, we are always trying to find better things or to, to optimize our tool set no. but but spam testing deliverability testing is, is like <laughs> probably the biggest blind spot there so we, we all have our different tools and um even even madeleine she's using multiple tools because <laughs> they, there is no one great yeah. for her okay so here's one more swiss army knife uh, and uh we'll see how great it is but it's it was nice tip and then it looks pretty interesting anyway yeah talking about emails um we got a little hack from our friend joey who in the forum um, talked about how to send form data to different recipients based on the user's choices made in the form which is a pretty interesting topic um would you mind to explain like how this basically functions yeah, what this is about is is a fairly typical desire that people have. Like mm -hmm. like the, uh, at the top of a, a form, there's a question: Is this a support request or a sales inquiry, yeah. for instance? Or is this about product A or product B? Um, and in either case, you want to switch the email recipient uh, to the proper group or person or whatever. Yeah, sure. And turns out there is no easy way to do that. Not even with, uh, cascaded forms and, and uh, or form fields, yeah. um, and all the magic that we have in Mordic. Uh, so what we did so far was use campaigns for that. So submit a form, um, some a campaign will, will have a, a condition and then so send an email accordingly. Yeah. But if you want to avoid that, you, uh, there's a, funny hack by joey yeah. some call it a dirty hack <laughs> the idea there is to work based on the uh contact owner mm -hmm. uh so he, he's abusing the the selection field um and setting the contact owner on that basis and then set the or have, have a form action that says send email to owner ah oh. yeah smart so, yeah smart <laughs> smart it is yeah that's for sure <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he, he's a, a fox. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've heard you've been to the DACH meetup and brought a baggage of, of new things to talk about and yeah. new ideas. Yeah, this this meetup, that's really just an online meetup, meet so the travel was not too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, of the German-speaking uh, countries, that's a mon monthly thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And um, this uh, every time we have some, some like main topic, this time we presented uh, advanced usage of the GrapeJS email builder. Ooh, so wow. beyond just um, layout things, so I drag a column here and a text block there and a button there. Yep. Um, you can also have functional or programmatical blocks. Um, and so in this example, that was a newsletter for e-commerce provider, um, you, we, we had blocks that, for instance, um, add a nice preview 
box for a certain product. So you oh. dra drag this box into the content, mm -hmm. you enter the product ID, and then it will fetch the image, the description, the price, the, the previous price, the link target, etc. And uh, create, turn it into a nice uh, visual object. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then one one thing that was even more well fascinating to <laughs> people um, was that we are doing personalization mm -hmm. um, in terms of personal product recommendation. Yeah. So using an external recommendation engine, that's not part of Mordic, of course, we are building an email that includes a box um, Or, with, or, or a, a grid of, of multiple recommendations and in, in, like like six images, for instance, with a recommendation for that person based on some choices made by the editor before, yep. but of course based on the personal behavior. And of course, right image, right product, right link target and all. So and, and all the editor has to do is drag this, this recommendation grid into the template. Mm -hmm. And maybe choose the proper brand or category or, or uh, algorithm or whatever, and then automatically, uh, automatically you have a million emails with with absolutely individualized uh, recommendations in it. Crazy. Yeah. So again, this is not about the recommendation technology, but about the fact that the Grapes.js builder can do much more than just display uh, nice layouts. Yeah. Um, drawback here is that the Grapes.js has this concept of plugins, which is powerful, mm -hmm. um, but there's no clean mechanism to leverage that inside of the Mordic world yet. I know <laughs> we're, we're in, in the Grapes project or in, in initiative, we're discussing that, and um, I sure hope we'll, we'll make progress there. For now, as an agency, we have to manually exchange or well technically exchange exchange a file every time we want to update a functionality in that part mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but well the ideal situation would of course uh lie like a plugin uh, system where we just hook in the plugin or even multiple plugins one gives us this box one gives us that behavior oh yeah um and uh yeah so it's only just beginning but it's it's way beyond Things that that a regular email service provider like Mailchimp or whatever can yeah. do or will Surely. ever be able to do. So fantastic stuff! It was really fascinating, fascinating presentation and also discussion afterwards. And in the uh, Windschatten, <laughs> uh, Windshadow, <laughs> Windshadow. Okay, if, if, <laughs> following up to that discussion, um, we also discussed the builder in general because it's so powerful or so much better than the previous builder and mm -hmm. it still has so much potential but it also has so nasty pain points <laughs> yeah and so my question was <laughs> okay see. guys what is the most important pain points and, mm -hmm. and the outcome was a real bucket of ideas basically yeah. how to make the builder better or things that are pretty not much well known and then we forget about it etc And so that was good to have that collection once again. The only problem is, ah, shoot, what do I do with these 10 <laughs> points? Um, so probably the best option now to bring the Tiger team to full speed mm -hmm. that, that uh, covers email or the email builder rather um, and, and let them take action. And, and I'd love to be part of that, by the way. Uh, so let me give you some examples. Um, we still cannot... Um, select from from placeholders like we did before. We can say curly bracket contact uh, contact field equals email curly mm -hmm. bracket, but there's no drop down or, or anything like that where we can do True. that or choose a form or or yeah. all the things yeah, we and, can and do before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I know that's the same in many systems out there, but but more they could do bef better before, and we absolutely want to do better going forward yeah then uh nice little thing is the preview text mm -hmm. um that's part of my mgml it's just not easy to do that in the builder so there's today what we do is do a little hack uh by just putting some white spaces uh as the preview text yeah. in the theme and then the user can replace that so that's 
hint. <laughs> uh, but uh, we can do better. Once again, there should be like a little proper form field yeah. in the builder. It should remove any uh, HTML markup or whatever True, that, yeah. that drag and drop or that copy and paste can bring and then break things. Uh, la la la. So many things. Uh, other example: uh, the un publish date mm -hmm. i mean it's a great feature that we can have scheduled publishing in in Mordic. first confusion is that people do not really get it what's the relationship between the publish and button and the public yeah. no, no the publish button and the publish date oh, okay. do any both just one what the right settings here so that's basically just text we should do use better wording and make increase increase the usability mm -hmm. dramatically the other thing is a pitfall that if you don't unpublish it will be published forever and whoever gets in that segment a year from now will still get this nice yeah. little old email oh but by the way talking about that there's been a knowledge base article went this well life this week mm -hmm. talking about that feature mm -hmm. and how to handle it correctly so now okay. there is a resource but it's no, more the, or less hidden no yeah and and now now it comes to user interface yeah the much better solution would be to just make it a mandatory field true so not let the user save it if he does not decide on unpublishing and if he if there's an option for never never yeah. unpublish yeah. that's okay if it's an explicit choice uh, but now the default is forever and people don't even understand that yeah. uh, i i would love to go the, through this <laughs> entire list but but it's too long but very simple example uh in the in the builder there is no save or no cancel button mm -hmm. um i know in the email itself there is but the people are in the builder and panic because they don't know what happens if they click the little cross sign yeah user interface 101 right yeah. uh, and uh anything else undo feature wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> integrated uh, spam testing oh here's here's a good one uh, in new file manager or media manager mm -hmm. the current one is Ah, rudimentary <laughs> at you best like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so there's an effort to replace it by oh what's it el uh, i can't tell the name but uh, it's the same that that uh for instance wordpress or drupal use um no idea I guess. <laughs> and, and uh, it's it's ugly <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's powerful um and there's a already the, the code is there to merge or to bring that to Mordic. Mm -hmm. the, the, the code is not 100% ready. There are some, I don't know, dependency conflicts, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So it was intended to be in 4.4. I hope it's going to be in 4.4.1 or maybe 2, whatever. No. But eventually we will have a much nicer builder. So that's near, f near future. Oh, that's nice to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if any of you out there have additional thoughts on the builder any ideas feature requests whatever specifically you're always welcome to issue that as a feature request in the forums mm -hmm. but maybe much less painful is to, to just drop me a line and tell me about your idea and i will i promise <laughs> <laughs> I, I will take this long list that i already have and then try to turn it into action anyway so yeah, your best chance to make the Grape Stress Builder the best in the world. Yeah. Oh, what else? Um, uh, on the SaaS front, there's a new product out there, a, a digital experience suite. So basically a, a SaaS uh, version of Mautic uh, with WordPress. Mm -hmm. Uh, with, with a nice surface and integration and all. Yep. Um, based in the US, it's called Stack, mm -hmm. S T A K double K, oh, S T A double okay. K. Yep. Um, frankly, I I'm not sure who, about the people behind Stack. I don't think I ever met or heard or talked to any one of them. Yeah. It would be nice to to learn who they are and and what, what their role in the community is so far or might be in the future. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's always good if, if more businesses base their thing on Mordic. True. To have this strategic commitment to Mordic. And um, yeah, we certainly want more and more and more of that. And uh, True. to have those people become active in, in terms of making Mordic better. That would be uh, yeah, that's a sweet <laughs> other, other part of the coin. Yeah. Um, 
I will just take that ball talking about making Mordic better. So not Mordic directly, <laughs> but, but the master of SQL. <laughs> <you know. laughs> um, there's a new version of the dev documentary in the making because the old developer docs were a bit of outdated and not too easy to handle. And there's been uh, yeah work in the making to get them over to read the docs and get them organized nicer and easier findings and everything. So there's some, some work in the making. Yeah, plus, plus there is a lot of new content also, right? So, yeah, so today we, we have a parallel, two parallel worlds. One is the original uh, developer.modic.org, mm -hmm. where you have the, all the API documentation, etc. But like getting started uh, with webhooks or with, with, with creating a plugin in the first place, etc. That's things that are, do not even exist in the original mm -hmm. one. So that's a new world. Yeah. Uh, and to, to be complete, Currently, you need both, uh, but eventually it will be all in, in one, one place. place. And yeah. Really nice, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, talking about documentation, um, for this year's Google Season of Doc, Favor is uh, looking for your ideas and inputs for the structure of the end user documentation because the end user documentation needs some improvements as well. And Favor is currently looking for inputs and ideas, how to structure it, and um, just needs your opinion, your idea. If you you out there, listener, have an idea, um, what possible improvements could be, or what a nice structure might be there that we are not using yet, um, please go to the forum. There's a thread you can find it in the show notes and drop drop your ideas. Yeah, like like all the other things just mentioned, it's all in the show notes, like always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, and uh, I think we can move on to the interview part. Yeah, I surely. already spoiled, <laughs> spoilered, uh, that I'm going to talk to Andreas Stuber um, about that thing called universal chat and then the integration into Mordic. And, um, well, to set expectations right, universal chat is really a completely different or, or is way beyond what we do in Mordic or that what would currently make sense even in Mordic. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also a ton of, of interesting insights and a ton of interesting learnings that is good for us. And of course, bringing things together is the end goal here. So uh, yeah, enough talking from my side. Here we go. And here it is, the interview that I already announced or promised in the last episode um, when we discussed uh, the chat options, including hybrid chat. And uh, yeah, Andreas uh, was very open to telling us a little bit about the backgrounds. And here we go. Welcome, Andreas Stuber. Welcome to the show. Hello, Eckhart. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, yeah. My pleasure. And um, again, thanks for your time. Um Before we get going, give us a little background. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you are located in Switzerland. That probably means something with mountains. But uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, uh, as a Swiss uh, living in Bern, it's kind of uh, obvious. Uh, mountaineering is one of my great uh, passions. I'm very often climbing and uh, ski mountaineering and stuff like that. And as a compensation, I often go uh, dancing Argentine tango with my wife. Uh, we have two kids, and uh, my wife is originally or uh, partially from uh, Ghana, which also one, is one of the reasons why I became professionally active in Africa and uh, South Asia. And so as a result of that, I've uh, done contact centers and customer care solutions for the last 25 years, uh, especially in Africa and South Asia. So that's where, where I come from. Okay. Did you ever try tango on the top of a mountain? No. Uh, not yet in, in a, in a, on a mountain, but uh, on in many places in Africa. It's actually funny. You go to Tunis uh, and you can go to Morocco or in Egypt, and uh, there are always very small, closed communities, uh, hidden cellars or something like that. So for me, that's a, oh, a way oh. to get in uh, contact with uh, people that share uh, a common passion. And, and so for me, that's always a nice way to get in touch with the local culture. So, Incredible. Well, it's wow. With, uh, with something from Argentina. So. <laughs> Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, wow. Okay. So let, let's switch before I get even more jealous. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. <laughs> okay, but maybe, maybe I'm still jealous. So tell us about Expert Flow. What What is that? What does yeah. it mean? 
So uh, Expert Flow, uh, we started uh, roughly 15 years ago. I'm the founder, owner, and CEO, and we have been fully focused on building contact centers in emerging markets. Um, and it's always been large uh, enterprise customers like bank, utilities, tax authorities, mobile operators, hospitals, and these kind of companies. So tangentially large uh, contact centers with, in some cases, thousands of agents working in customer service. And uh, the primary focus was Africa and South Asia. We now have, I think, nine offices uh, in, in those uh, areas. And um, since uh, about eight years, we started developing our own uh, software that we are now uh, providing for clients on a, a global basis. And it's mainly with a focus on customer service uh, for large enterprise customers. So that's maybe slightly different from the typical Motic user, which is maybe yeah. listening to this conversation, which is maybe more for outbound marketing. We are tendentially more in the inbound customer service uh, Ooh, space. Oh, don't say that. Well, no, okay. so, <laughs> <laughs> well what, what we yeah. do see is, I mean, those, both areas actually grow very much together. So yeah. we, we often actually are in a, in a in customer service, you typically have hundreds or thousands of agents working, and then often we have a small marketing department sitting somewhere on the side with a couple of dozen persons from a company and until now this was always kind of two different worlds and but we see that those two worlds are actually growing together more and more yeah. and we are being confronted with uh, questions regarding digital marketing uh, historically we have been doing voice campaigns from from contact centers um, but now we are talking about chat campaigns email campaigns and obviously this is all about digital marketing yeah. and that's kind of kind of why we bumped into Motic in the first place yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Mark and Mordic, like marketing automation in general is all about inbound. So, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not the traditional way of marketing. Just yeah. out of curiosity, I mean, 15 years for for expert flow with, with enterprise clients. Uh, what, what did you do to get there? Because I mean, you you don't get out of school and uh, get in touch with the enterprise clients, do you? So, how did you get there? Uh, Just I was, in one, uh, one sentence, if possible. Yeah, so I was uh, CEO of a Swiss company that did that at the beginning, and then I started oh. expanding abroad from Switzerland because Switzerland is a very small market, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And so some of the places were included, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, and so on. And then there was not always a shared enthusiasm uh, for okay. uh, those spaces, okay. and I just kind of continued in those markets uh, on and my I own uh, pace. And I started more or less as a consultant for large yeah. customers. And then I started hiring uh, engineers, and over time okay. now we have a pretty large team of I think okay. about 150 okay. employees, something like that. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's start talking about chat, and let's start with the basics. Um, Myself, if I consider myself an, a typical end user, I think web equals web chat. So something that happens in a browser. As a marketer, I probably don't envision some, some group chat or, or anything, but more like a one to many web chat, like you mentioned, support chat or pre-sales or whatever. Um, is that the same that, that you do with your chat product at the core? Yeah, so uh, we support multiple different chat channels, not only web chat, but also WhatsApp, SMS, Viber, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, so any, or Twitter direct messages, uh, Facebook Messenger, so any kind of customer facing chat channel that users might use. Um, we support outbound chats, which you can initiate from uh, Motic, which is basically the pro uh, what we're discussing here. And we then support customer service over those chat channels. And the customer service can be provided by a chatbot or by a human agent. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to digest that multi-channel thing, or maybe we discuss about it later. But for, for just for now, um, I have multiple channels. And... Uh, And when I get, try to get in touch with a client, typically with, with an existing or maybe even with an existing client, then I have the choice between multiple channel, channels and can use his per, or her prefer, preferred channel. Is that the right thing or can I switch between channels within the same conversation? So you can switch between conversations. So we have a notion of a conversation and within a conversation, we have the option of multiple sessions through different channels. Mm -hmm. So you could start mm -hmm. a... A chat session over one chat like, like sms and then you could switch over to web chat or to facebook messenger okay. 
And mm -hmm. we actually even take this further. You could then escalate a chat session to become a voice session as well. So oh for us, the okay, let, notion let's of say, yeah, let's let's say, say say that, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Let, let's save that for a bit later. Sure, sure. Yeah. Lower at the basic for now. Tell us a little bit about uh, areas where, where people use that kind of chats. We had high level examples already, but but maybe you can give us more examples and use cases. So what we see is. All call centers that we have, I mean, traditionally we have been in the call center space and all of them without exclusion are moving towards chat. So chat is definitely picking up in customer service very heavily. Uh, mm -hmm. We see it even in cases like suicide hotlines. So you would expect that <laughs> that's something very intimate. People would like to make phone calls, but even that is now happening over chat. And mm -hmm. even in those uh, areas, we are supporting those type of chat sessions with uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, <laughs> chat is really an ubiqu ubiquitous uh, customer service uh, channel. And in many cases, what we've seen, for example, Air Asia, uh, the airline in Air Asia, they completely, re actually, they don't have any human agents any longer. They only do things through AI, which mm -hmm. is maybe a little bit of a radical approach, but uh, we just see a, a lot of opportunity coming up in, with chat, generally speaking. Yeah, and I, I do think that it's very different depending on where on the world you are. In some cultures, it's it's very normal already and others people find yeah. it annoying or whatever yeah. um before we go to the to the actual application to more uh give me like maybe your top five priorities what a good chat product should bring what what and what is good bot feature or whatever yeah. can, can you give us some criteria so I think the main point is actually the capability to integrate for any chat solution. So this can be which chat channels do you integrate with? So uh, web chat, SMS, WhatsApp, etc. That's one. Um, secondly, I think uh, if as soon as you have human agents for chat, you might want to be able to integrate with a contact center. Uh, the third point would be to maybe Uh, escalate to a voice uh, channel or to mm -hmm. to support voice from a or sorry support the voice session with chat so after after the end of a voice call you want to send a chat message for example uh, then being capable to integrate with a chat bot uh, obviously any chat bot of your choice not being glued to a chat bot uh, that's especially important if you Uh, have multiple languages or multiple use cases because not our, all chat bots are, uh, chat bots are equal. Um, then you have the integration point of CRM solutions. So you might want to uh, integrate with uh, Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, Siebel, ServiceNow, etc. And mm. the last integration point is obviously to integrate to Motic <laughs> or yeah. to digital marketing solutions because we see yeah. that as an upcoming use case. So, yeah. I mean, in a nutshell, it's all about we see the main differentiator of those of chat solutions, generally speaking, being the capability to integrate. Uh, mm -hmm. That's for, for us a key factor. Yeah. Um, help me understand a little bit how the architecture looks in, in such a world. You say you support, or with your product, for instance, but probably for, for everybody else as well, uh, you, you support other channels like, like SMS, etc. Um, and then there's web chat. Is that an integrated part of your product? It is a different product of yourself, or, or would you support an external external web chat like just like any other external channel? What is the role of web chat? Web chat is for us just a chat channel like any other. There is no difference yeah. for us, and a chat is just one communication channel about amongst multiple communication channels. So. For example, what we see during a chat session, you might have a customer browsing the web uh, while he mm. is chatting with you. And so this kind of web browsing activities might be relevant for the conversation. For example, if it's a live chat where the agent assists with mm. chat the customer. So you would be interested to know which page the customer is on at any point in time. Mm. Um, so I think chat will also just become one of one uh, channel uh, of a whole channel mix in in future customer interactions. Mm. So so in 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 general, the the the, the entire system is all the logic and um, the escalation and, and themes and what do I know, and then the actual user interface. Uh, The, the JavaScript snippet that you plug into your website is something that you bring 
but that is really nothing but an interface that is really exchangeable. Is that about right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So mm. we, we just provide a, and we do that in the form of a, uh, a Google tag, uh, because very often at the beginning of a chat session, we want to capture initial information about the customer, which is often available somewhere on the website. Uh, so instead of us providing a user interface for that information, we typically capture it from the website or mm -hmm. from Motic, for example. Motic has a lot of information about customers, typically, as you can think. Mm -hmm. And so we then capture that information and transfer this information, for example, to the chatbot or to the routing engine of the contact center. Mm -hmm. So the customer does not have to re-explain who he is, why he's contacting you, mm -hmm. etc. So we're trying to use as much information as is available in order to make the user yeah. experience as, as little annoying as possible. Yeah, okay. And then, then uh, you mentioned the AI integration. Mm -hmm. Again, as an outsider, I, I always thought that AI is an integrated feature of a chat system, but that's not the case, right? No, we, we, I mean, we see this should be treated completely separate. So we intentionally don't do AI ourselves. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we integrate with multiple AI engines, um, but uh, so with, with all the large ones like uh, Google Dialogflow, uh, IBM Watson, uh, Amazon Lex, uh, etc. I mean, there's a whole panel at Rasa in Germany, which is a superb uh, open source platform. So we integrate with all of those. Uh, mm -hmm. And then also for speech recognition engines. So we integrate with all those AI engines. But uh, I think it's imp as a customer, I would want to be independent of the AI vendor, and I would primarily make sure that I own the data because the the, the gold yeah. currency in the in the world of artificial intelligence is, in my opinion, not the the method or the algorithm that mm. you're using, but it's your data. So tagged data yeah. is actually the gold value, the sterling value yeah. in, in, in the world of artificial intelligence. So you yeah. want to make sure you own the interaction history, you own the transactions, you own the Uh, the chat messages that have been exchanged, because if you have that data, you can use that data to migrate to any AI engine you okay. want. So, oh, okay. though, I mean, in my opinion, the, the AI engines are a little bit uh, overemphasized in terms of importance. For for me, that's just a a tool that mm -hmm. you then use or a process that you use, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay. Um, can you talk about the license fees for mm -hmm. hybrid chat? So we start at, uh, it's a pay-per-use uh, license model. We start at $14 per uh, agent per month up to a certain number of transactions uh, if it's fully automated. Uh, that's list price. We, we then add uh, a certain fee for chat channels and chatbot integrations. Mm. Uh, but that's where we, where we basically start with uh, in terms of licensing. Okay. Yep. Nice. Um Okay, coming to the Mautic side of things, finally, what what elements would a perfect integration cover in your mind? It doesn't mean w w to describe your integration, but a perfect one. What would you dream of? So I think what would be a good thing to think about is, um, we, I mean, at the end, we all want to, or many want to kind of close a deal or, or, or get the customer to a certain uh, decision or, or something like that. So I, I think a good thought process is, Where do you think might uh, an interactive chat or or a chat message that goes out? Where can those uh, can this capability increase your chances to close a, a deal? So that that's <laughs> the main thought, right? And mm -hmm. I would not only think about this through marketing terms. In terms, I'm sending out one message, but it might also be something kind of interactive. And with that, you can get the customers used to interacting to you via chat and chat is very well uh, um, as a, a very well suited tool for automated customer service so mm -hmm. we see chats or websites basically migrating certain capabilities into live chat or into chat sessions with chatbots uh, and you, so you can maybe then do certain things in the chat sessions that you might not have on the on the website because you can get more rapidly to the point and identify what the need is of a customer without him having to navigate through a whole website basically mm. um, and and so what i would suggest is then to look at how what kind of needs do your customer has have Uh, try to automate those needs as much as possible with chatbots and maybe work with Wizard of Oz scenarios where you have live chat agents that actually pretend to be a chatbot and just find out <laughs> what your yeah that's that's uh, something we usually do uh, actually okay. to to pretend to be a bot 
And then uh, this basically tells us what the customers are looking for. We try to automate that. Um, and then you can still think, okay, do I still need agents or do I need only need agents for extreme scenarios or for high value customers? And then you offer a live agent for customers where you said, well, okay, these have 1000 points in Motic, for example. And before 1000 points, I simply don't provide live agents. I just provide chatbots, for example. Uh, okay. Um, I, I'm trying, trying hard to form a picture in my mind. Um, when I think back to the target audiences or the, the use cases, yeah. basically, in my understanding, it is about uh, existing clients um, in an inbound or in an outbound scenario, if you get that right. Mm -hmm. And then potentially also with new business, and that's obviously inbound, like, like people touch base with you on the website you actually generate leads or things like that so one one sort of integration would be um lead or contact data goes from the web chat to modic mm -hmm. the other would be um modic gives uh, information to the web web chat mm -hmm. or not the web chat but the chat system And then maybe even with existing clients, um, certain types of data goes back into Mordic because it's relevant relevant for Mordic's decisions. Yes. So that would be three layers of integration, mm -hmm. or two and a half or something. Am I missing something there, or is it? No, that's it. pretty much it. So one is, I mean, uh, if the customer uh, initiates a chat session, typically we, we capture the chat session. We, we uh, can, I mean, obviously that all of that is locked. It could be, we, we don't do that yet, but we could uh, um, synchronize those chat activities or interaction histories with a Mautic interaction history. Maybe you only want to synchronize the fact that there was a conversation, or maybe mm. you would only want to synchronize the, the the main content of the conversation. So was it a complaint? Was it a, a new order? What was the result of the conversation? Mm. So you want to only want to write back metadata to to Motic, for example, so that you mm. have the information that Motic needs to later on take decisions on on uh, future campaigns or or scheduled mm. activities. Right. Mm. Um, we see Motic primarily as a way to schedule things uh, to say, okay, under this condition, do that, do that, or at that time, do that. Uh, and uh, Or if you want to reach out to the customer, try to call him. If you cannot call him, then uh, try to reach him via SMS. Ooh. And, and okay. if you're not able to reach him via SMS, then try to send an email. So, yeah. and, and that's a really good strength of Motic. If we, I mean, if I come from a contact center background, those kind of campaign management capabilities were very limited. And what I really love about Mautic is you can create very complex campaigns uh, that can uh, take care of uh, time uh, zones, of uh, languages, uh, of multiple channels, and you can very nicely orchestrate your, your campaigns. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's actually where we see Mautic playing a pivotal role in, in our Uh, architecture landscape actually cool so th this is basically about outbound contacts you know, for, for whatever yeah. reason it might be yes uh, data that comes from crm or pre-existing things or whatever or but, transactions but where a customer calls yeah. in and you were not there and then you want to reach yeah. out to him schedule a new mm -hmm. session or where you mm -hmm. have an alert something happened you want to notify the customer so it can also mm -hmm. be things that are kind of transaction based and you just know okay i need to reach that customer within the next uh, one week uh, through any channel then we kind of feed a new action into Motic. Uh, and Almotic will then just make sure that somehow we, we reach out to the customer and that he's not being forgotten. Mm. Yeah. So that part is already there with your Mautic integration today, yes. right? Yes, yeah. yeah, correct. Okay, yeah. okay. and what, what else might be, or, you know, what, what else is already there? Let's say, put it that way. So the other part that is there is the uh, inbound uh, part where uh, where you receive chat sessions from through any channel. And mm. 
right now, uh, and you can could then say, okay, if I have a chat session, I will update Smaltic. And the easiest way would be initially just to do that. Uh, we are a Google Tag Manager. That's what we currently do. We mm. say, okay, we have a, a chat session, a web chat session. We transfer it via GTM to Maltic, and Maltic is then updated. Though there was an event called start of a chat session, right? And mm. the metadata that was, was captured before the chat is then also being transferred to uh, Maltic. So Maltic would know, okay, there was a chat session with this identifier, mm. and then you can kind of look it up. Um, okay. And you can basically enrich this information uh, across potentially any chat channel. So you're not limited only to the website. Uh, but this could be across all uh, domains that you have. So this could include Facebook Messenger, for example, if you have a Facebook page or if you have an yeah. Instagram page or uh, whatever oh. kind of social or Twitter, direct oh. messages, those things could also yeah. be captured. Yeah, it would, would be cool to have a really comprehensive demo of that <laughs> or demo video or something. Uh, I assume this is all a SaaS solution, right? So, uh, so provide uh, on-premise So currently, we the main deployments were on-prem solutions. So we were working okay. with uh, Docker containers uh, that we mm -hmm. deploy as mi microservices. We're using um, uh, what is called uh, C3 uh, yeah. K3 uh, uh, N. So, so the small Kubernetes deployment. So it's a failover as a, a redundant deployment mm -hmm. uh, from that perspective. Currently, that's the case, and but we are uh, about to offer a cloud service as well, uh, mm -hmm. where we host the chat uh, framework, and, and you just basically can consume it as a uh, uh, pay-per-use yeah. service, which yeah, is more suited for smaller customers. Yeah, well, it's just both ends, right? Uh, yeah. for, for larger, uh, for uh, alone for for GDPR reasons, uh, if nothing else, it's already attractive to host on-premise. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, a cool. thorny and, issue, and correct. <laughs> so, so, yeah, there, there also is no live demo, or, or is there uh, or, or, or a trial or something? Uh, yes, so we have a uh, uh, um, on our website. We or we have, we have a, a plugin that you can install, uh, so we mm -hmm. can uh, provide that. Uh, we could do a, a demo uh, on uh, for SMS. That's something that we have uh, ready, and we're going to soon record videos. Uh, to demonstrate that. So, but you will see screenshots, or you can actually already now see screenshots as to how to install uh, the plugin uh, into Motic. Um, yeah. And we, yeah, so that, that's so something I, that we... More, more about the, the to understanding the actual scenarios and the capabilities and so on. Not, not the nitty gritty of, of installation, uh -huh. but really what is the value of the thing. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, so it's essentially, I mean, to to some extent, it's very similar to the uh, Twilio chat engine that many of you might use um, mm -hmm. or already be familiar with. Uh, the difference being that uh, you can add other chat channels, and mm -hmm. that it's you can then integrate with uh, AI engines and with uh, live agents and with contact centers. Mm -hmm. So it goes okay. a little bit further in those uh, scenarios. But from a conceptual mm -hmm. point of view, it's it's actually very similar in nature to that. Okay. Got it. So, how, how did you find about all this? Uh, so, in, in about Mautic in the first first place, uh, why, why did you choose to use it? Um, first, it was just painful for us to. We did this campaign management all on our own initially for voice campaigns, and then customers said, "Well, I want to be able to send uh, SMS as well as part of a campaign if I cannot reach the customer." And then some said, "Well, I want to send an email," and then some said, "Well, if the customer does this and that on the website, uh, I want to send an email." Then we said, "Well." Oh. This becomes really complicated and every customer had new requirements and then we started to think about workflows and stuff. Yeah. And uh, at some point we then bumped into the large uh, uh, digital marketing solutions like uh, uh, Adobe Marketing Cloud uh, and, and, and similar uh, solutions and had a look at that and we thought, well, this is really interesting, but we need something also for uh, entry range uh, clients and something that we can... Um, Uh, get our hands much dirtier into that we understand that we can modify as it suits us because we see this not only as uh, digital marketing not only related to the website and only for chat but generally all communication channels and mm -hmm. that's where we then uh, had a look at Motic uh, and and we just saw the, the flexibility that Motic gives us is, is, is really cool and so that's why we, we jumped on it Cool, we, very good yeah. So this is your First contribution to Mautic, really? This, this plugin? Yes. 
yeah, yeah. Oh, and so we, we've we've done uh, a couple of customer projects now already. I mean, they're still kind of basic. I don't I don't think we are <laughs> uh, very skilled in Motic. We would tendentially work with companies that are more proficient in the marketing space than we are because we we consider ourselves more, more from the customer service uh, range of things mm -hmm. and and to provide those channels. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's certainly our tool of choice, and we, we typically then work with companies that are uh, more proficient in the marketing space than we are. Yeah, well, that's that's fine. Um, technically, when when you started doing this plugin and and implementing, or or first conceptual work, but then implementation mm -hmm. of the plugin, is there anything that you would have, would have wished for to make things easier easier for you? Um, well, the, we just had for ourselves some <laughs> learning, to, uh, learning tooth uh, yeah. ages, right? So, it, which I, I think it would, it would be more uh, our failures uh, to not knowing certain things. So we were struggling with PHP and cron jobs and, and stuff like that. Um, but and then we are also looking forward to the new Motic marketplace. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, that that's something that we are really looking forward. So we're excited about that coming up. Um, yeah. But, but it's your I, own team who did, who did who did the implementation here, and uh, yes, with a lot of strains. Yeah, I mean, we we did yeah. work with uh, consultants for this as well because we don't actually consider this a core area of ours. So yeah. we tangentially work with uh, consultants in that particular space, and we yeah. just make sure we are capable to handle the communication aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, perfect. And, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay, and and so eventually. You are. If I now get this right, you, you have a number of clients or a number of large, super large clients, and then some smaller clients. And going forward, they will more or less automatically be Mautic users as well. That's cool. Yeah, tendentially. I mean, it's our baseline mm. uh, solution. It's not. I mean, we, for now, we have only done small scale uh, distribution. Well, small scale. I mean, <laughs> some are using it for uh, thousands of messages uh, and, and campaigns and stuff like that. But it's still kind of small scales or limited yeah. deployments. But for us, it will certainly become the baseline for uh, digital marketing and the reference installation for digital marketing. Uh, Very so, cool. Yeah. 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 Really good. Can Can you tell us anything? Or any other sneak peek into the future, like like uh, any news we can hope for in hybrid chat, yeah. Nordic integration, what else? Yeah, so uh, one project, I mean, we're working on a very large project in uh, in Africa where we basically will uh, need to be able to provide outbound uh, sessions through any channel. So we will be adding a voice as a channel as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically that will would give you the capability to launch a voice call Uh, to a customer at a certain stage of a campaign. Uh, this voice call could then be handled by a voice bot or by a live agent, uh, So, mm. we, we, which would then require routing to a live agent uh, in the background. And again, voice bots and chat bots are using more or less the same technologies. So if you implement something for a chat, it basically means you could actually use the same dialogue for voice as well. Uh, so we see there a natural transition from chat to voice uh, to live agents uh, eventually. Mm -hmm. So I think all three will actually come together. And the starting point of many of those outbound things will uh, will be uh, Motic for, for any company-initiated conversation. Mm -hmm. And so that's very, something very that we, cool. will, we, we hope to deploy in uh, the third or fourth quarter. So we will have pilots a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the main thing will be to add voice to that. Yeah, I mean, third quarter is only two weeks from now. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, but yeah. we are actually we're in the okay. we're actually releasing the internally that the version has already been released, and the, mm -hmm. the only thing is now to integrate it into Motic as well. So it's more an ad adapting it to Motic cool. question more than anything. Okay. Else. Anyway, thank you so 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 much. I mean, it's huh? fascinating to have a little bit background into the the really high end. Uh, chat systems out there or uh, whatever customer communication systems Thanks out there. Thanks for calling us high ends. So. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I don't have a clue, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it is way more that, that, than, than in in a typical website owner's Probably, uh, yeah. mind yeah. Uh, happens when, when yeah, it comes yeah. to, to chat. And, and, and it m makes you understand the opportunities much better and also the challenges. And I, I love the combination between open source and, and uh, proprietary technology especially when it comes to the more sophisticated or more specialized parts. I mean, that's, that's completely okay. 
and um, it's always like uh, something in it for both sides. Like like Mordic certainly uh, profits from, from from you doing this and then introducing people into Mordic. We can also learn concepts and, and uh, maybe lear learn transition content concepts into other worlds, etc. And uh, certainly for you, I completely understand the the change that Mordic meant, the flexibility in terms of flexibility and uh, scope and so on. Yeah. So yeah, very very cool. I'm looking forward to see more from from you guys in Switzerland and. Um, Maybe a when when you have a demo video or something ready, um, I, I'll I'll follow up and, and share that in the Mordecast. Yep. We'll for do now, that. thank you very much for your time. Take care and uh, stay safe. Talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a very good day. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye bye. Well, you were not lying. Setting expectation it is quite different from what <laughs> we understand as normal web chat, but it's super. Yeah, su su super lots of uh, ideas and ways to think. And yeah, for for me, it's always eye opening to to learn about other business cases, basically mm -hmm. other things where or other other things that people do, mm -hmm. and uh, still work with Mordic on that basis. And yep. then there, there's more that I ran into in the last couple of weeks, and. Um, We, we certainly talk about more, yeah. but but this thing even with out, outbound and all that it's a uh, interesting and as you said it's uh, so many inspirations for us it's a uh, it's a good thing and if they yeah if totally. their, their plugin evolves over time and maybe th some code can be contributed to the core etc would be perfect <laughs> love it yeah um, I think one thing we did not cover yet is the. Yeah, more the conference global, but in a review kind of perspective. Because mm -hmm. last time we talked about that, we're excited going there, participating. But now, in hindsight, one month later, um, we can talk about it, but on a review perspective, I'd say. Yeah, well, <laughs> so if I if today I look in the mirror and, and say, hey, Hecky, how did you like Morticon mm -hmm. Global? How did you? <laughs> <laughs> You're not my mirror. <laughs> um, uh, the, the first thing that comes to mind that, oh, I'm glad it's over. It was so stressful. It was such a high adrenaline. And uh, the next thing is, oh, it was so worth it. Yeah. Because uh, there was, once again, I mean, I know I've been telling the same thing over and over again, but, but this sort of conference is so stuffed with uh, good with knowledge and, and good hints and, and, and bits and pieces and, mm -hmm. and, and new per perspectives and new people yeah um, totally agree that, that you always um, come back and, and don't even know where to start in, in digesting all that and then there's uh, the fact that we have four tracks in parallel so mm -hmm. no way you can have seen uh, the better part of it um, so I would say tip number one and uh, the, the one, one and only <laughs> real tip is, is go to YouTube and, uh, look, at, look up the videos. I'm not sure they should be released any day now. They should be. Yeah. I, I hope they are or by now. Um, but, but there's something in it for everyone, be it, be it for, uh, developers or infrastructure people, be it for, uh, strategists or, or, or marketing operations true yeah. people very um, diverse topics yeah totally and then all the way from from gdpr to uh the future of mordic but what i did like a lot was that that our main keynote was not about mordic technology but about using and leveraging mm -hmm. mordic for the actual goals because in the end it's all about marketing achievements it's not about fancy code and so yeah, on true it, it's it's part of the motiv motivation it's part of the success but but in the end um that should matter most that that people can use their goals with it okay anyway um so um yeah P cool thing once again around the world uh, hundreds of people um 
I can't wait for. Wow, well, 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 that's okay. We have <laughs> one year break into the break next break online thing, <laughs> but it's uh, super successful, and uh, yeah, the stress is worth it in the end. Yeah, when when Ruth and I sat down for the closing session. We did a little bit of, of recap and then um, also numbers, but also like impressions, mm -hmm. which uh, <laughs> I, I remember you, you and, and uh, some other from, from the team kind of crushed that video and jumped, <laughs> yeah. jumped in the picture uh, behind me with some cocktails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now, now I remember. <laughs> um, no, that, that was fun. And um, at, at that point, when the thing is over, it, it really feels like like... You're finishing something yeah I great like totally i don't agree. know your master thesis or building a house <laughs> or whatever and, yeah. and then it's like the mm -hmm. sleep for three days <laughs> get yeah. the rest yeah. needed in <laughs> no, no. okay so if if uh, any one of the listeners missed this conference do look at the videos but yeah. absolutely con consider being part of it next time because it has it has a certain dynamic in in this event where the, of course this there was much better social interaction because the platform mm -hmm. was just so much better yeah but also Agreed. there's like like hints uh or of, of um related talks etc what to do next or where to do a little breakout and some things like that yeah yeah loved it what did Same. you think um yeah i kind of agree with the When it's over, you're in the first place, you're happy that you've done it and everything went smoothly. Mm. As this year, I contributed a lot more than the prior years because I yeah, took hands the um, design. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should mention that you and I were heavily involved in, in yeah. organizing and running the event. So it's not like every attendee will fall into a hole <laughs> after one if you're just event. attending it, yeah, it yeah. But, um, i've invested i'd say a stellar amount of time getting the design the platform design everything up and it went smoothly in the end so i'm it pretty was a stellar design <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah I, i'd say it's uh, worth the effort good okay that's i guess the, the most important <laughs> bottom line yeah and then there was a little um Breaking news at the yeah, end. Yeah, looking a bit into the future. Uh, and as you know, we, we love this online type of event. Mm -hmm. it's, it's intentionally called Mordic Conference Global. Yeah. It's always online because um, it, no matter where we go, be it uh, in, in Middle East or be it in, in North America or, yeah. or be it in Australia, you will always have a certain percentage of the the mod community who are blocked from going there either yeah. they cannot get the visa or they cannot afford the travel or whatever so as a truly global and, and, and no barriers event this is the only way to go and i'm so happy that we have it even if we never meant to do it <laughs> for the little sea animal hat hit here um so we have that and we're gonna stay with it and for Uh, just a little reminder for those who missed it or, or not have it uh, present. The, the decision or the, the, the follow-up consideration was that we still love in-person events. It's, True. It, it mm -hmm. is just different. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. You have a com t totally different energy. You have t totally different options of, of uh, doing site To chats and, and making yeah, friends the and socializing and, part in, yeah. in person is just Or are different you, even spinning ideas and all that um so we also want that but but uh, when we go and say okay what conference is in boston mm -hmm. that's fine but we go back to the same exclusivity that we that i just described yeah. so the and and what we also cannot do is have a Mordic conference in every part of the world every year. So the the compromise that we did and or the solution that we love is that we do a per continent conference mm -hmm. in one continent every year. So last year it was Europe, it was Belgium, True. Uh, very cool. Um, and this year it is some other continent, so not the same twice. That's mm -hmm. that's the rule. 
Um, and the next year is going to be yet another one. So we, we did have this um, call for suggestions. So, mm -hmm. so we, have, we had pitches from all over the world, except for Australia and Antarctica, I guess. <laughs> um, and in the end, the choice narrowed down to North or South America, mm -hmm. uh, multiple places even in, in both continents. And... In the end, the winner was Sao Paulo in Sao Brazil. Paulo, hey. So we have a Mautic Conference South America 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, the date is always November, or typically November. There may be exceptions sooner or later, but but we stick with November for now. Yeah. Um, Sao Paulo it is. There is a good, uh, I mean, it is one of the strongest Mautic communities on the ground in, in Brazil. True. Um, but there's a good team already for the local organization. And of course, it is not Brazil, it is South America. So we will have a live translation between Portuguese and Spanish. Mm -hmm. We will also yes. have some, some live translation to and fro English. So uh, maybe for the main sta stage only, but, but we don't know yet, but it will yep. be there. So there will be English talks. Uh, and it also makes sense for English language visitors to go there and still understand <laughs> things. Um, so it is primarily for South America and it is to to have a great event there to strengthen mm. the local community, but also, of course, to have, to have some, some impact on the rest of the world. And everybody, like last year, everybody from around the world is, is welcome to go there as an attendee to go sure. there as a speaker and um we will surely have some some events around it like like uh, an intensive sprint like we had in, in brussels as well in belgium as well yeah sounds exciting yeah is it not and uh, one learning for me was that the, the flight to brazil is not not too expensive from from europe anyway it oh. is pretty affordable mm -hmm. if you book early up so the, the date is not yet set but you may want, want to uh start considering if you want to go and, and if so once the date is out book your flights early that's the best recommendation you can get i guess <laughs> yeah so i'm looking forward to that a lot oh, i, me I too. sure hope i will be able to go and many others from the team too and I, I heard some some positive feedback there. <laughs> Here, okay. there. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you know as soon as the, the date is fixed. I hope that's going to be this month anytime soon. Hope so, too. Okay, yeah, looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to any sort of feedback to this podcast op episode, um, to any questions or tips that you might have, or maybe things that you want to be mentioned here on the podcast or uh, specifically any sort of criticism or, yeah, or improvements <laughs> let us know like always and most of all spread the world tell uh, tell other people about this modic podcast and um yeah be back next time yeah thank you very much until then stay safe bye 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 bye